right? Hello, everybody. My name is Martha Alter Hines. So we are here with you for a fourth Soul Wisdom Circle with an amazing group of women beings. Um, and today we have Don Brunke, Kelly Hunter, Heather Ensworth, Ann Baring, Maura McBratney, Melanie Reinhardt, and Julia Belaz and myself. And if you have watched these other circles that we've been holding, um, you'll remember that the purpose really of these circles is to invite you to be here as part of the wisdom of existence that is you, that is us, that is the community that is all of us and the sacred circle that is those of us here on this recording, but also that includes all of you. So I would love to, as usual, invite you to feel yourself coming present here with us. And also you might remember that in the other videos, we've been taking turns facilitating these circles. And today is going to be my turn. <laughs> so, so I'm both opening and facilitating today. Um, but in, you know, in the next circles, we'll have other people facilitating like we have been before. Um, and today we are recording this just after the September equinox, the Libra equinox. So today our theme is going to be balance, which is a very equinox related theme. And as we go, as we start this circle, I'm going to lead us into a, a guided channeled very brief meditation regarding equinox. Um, and I, but I also want to say that even if you're watching this video anytime in the year, whether or not it's near an equinox, of course, these themes are relevant always. And even what I'm about to channel is relevant always. I think of often when I'm channeling, I think of it sort of like a homeopathic remedy that, that it happens to be the resonance of this moment. Cause we are in this time of equinox. But it's also it's a it's a vibration that then can maybe you know be what you're needing in whatever moment it happens to be. So that's that's how I hold this. My that's my intention with what we're about to do. And um, yeah, thank you all so much for being here. And please enjoy. Okay. So yeah. So to ground and come into this space together mm -hmm. um we can feel ourselves in this time of year present here as beings of the earth and beings of the solar system and beings in relationship with the star that we call our sun who is massive in comparison with the earth and all the other planets of the solar system, all the other beings of the solar system and who we are in a dance with continually, literally. And you can feel in this moment how at this time of year, it's the one, one out of two times in the year when the two poles of our earth, in a sense, are held equally in relationship to the sun. And the two poles are equally sharing light and dark. So I'm just going to let the spirit world speak for a moment and take over for a second <clears throat> and lead us into a grounding with that reality. Okay, so hello and welcome. And like Martha said, we're in this time of equinox. And so we would invite you to imagine and feel yourself as the earth itself as a being that is earth and there, therefore in a sense is the earth because your body is made of the earth and the earth is made of the solar system and of 
the cosmos. So imagining yourself as this being that is the earth, you can feel how at this time of year in the two equinoxes, the relationship of the earth to the sun is at a particular moment in its dance <clears throat> that is powerful and healing in a very specific particular way. So we invite you to take a long, slow, deep breath and feel how at this moment in the year, you can imagine in a sense the energetic, the vibration, the energy of the sun, which is always extending throughout the whole solar system. That energy of the sun, imagine it moving to the earth in a sense like an embrace. And imagine, you can imagine two hands gently and powerfully holding either end of the axis of the earth. So you can imagine one hand on the North Pole, one hand holding the South Pole, gently, powerfully, similar to if you've ever had craniosacral, a craniosacral session or an energy work session, you can imagine how at this time of year, the sun is holding, has one hand gently holding the North Pole and one hand gently holding the South Pole in equal balance and harmony. So at the time of the solstices, one pole is getting more energy and attention in a sense from the energy of the sun than the other pole. And that has a particular medicine and a particular purpose in the dance between the earth and the sun also. But at this time of year, one way to feel this is similar to a craniosacral hold or a polarity hold. So again, you can take a deep breath and feel one hand of the sun gently holding the north pole and one hand of the sun gently holding the south pole. And take a deep breath and just let yourself deeply, deeply, deeply relax. Feeling yourself being held completely, equally with day and night in equal balance, north and south in equal balance and the totality of your being, being held and acknowledged and the balancing and the healing that can arise in that holding space. And perhaps a remembering of the wholeness that you are and the totality that you are as earth, as cosmos, as source itself, as the all it is. And that wholeness and that totality is always true, no matter what time of the year it is, of course. Thank you each so much for being here. And so it is. Welcome. All right. So we have this theme of balance. 
Um, and I think Dawn, do you want to go first? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to share two short dreams that I had about a month ago, just about a month ago. And the first dream happened in the very early morning. I was kind of in that liminal state between sleeping and dreaming. And I was stretching. I was feeling my lower back, which I had had a lot of body work done because it's kind of the weak area in my body. And I was just wondering, hmm, I wonder if that back is kind of healed. If, have we found the core of that? And I was just thinking that thought and I fell asleep. And in the dream, I'm above my body. I'm hovering kind of in a distant, foggy space. It feels like maybe Scotland or Ireland. You know, I'm high. I'm, I'm about 10 feet above the earth. It's very mountainous, craggy. There's boulders and rocks. And I think, oh, that's my back. That's my back down there. But it's also a place on earth, right? And um, it's wild and rugged. And I see that there's a crack between two boulders. It looks like kind of a cave, like a vertical cave. And so I go down, I'm on my knees, and I start to pull at the rocks to see what's inside. And I hear a rumble from the earth. And I feel a thrumming, deep thrumming from the ground. And it's also from within myself, just this rumbling. And then there's the sudden presence of dragon. It's this ancient dragon that comes out of the cave. It's huge, it's dark and mossy. It's kind of has bright green and gilded scales. And it rises up out of the earth and then comes down on me. It, it's, it's, um, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. It's opening its mouth as it's lowering itself down. And I'm not really scared, but I'm thinking, is this a good dragon? Is this, like, is this okay? But the dragon comes down. It comes over, you know, it comes over me. It's swallowing me. And as it does that, I feel just this, I feel its confidence, huh? I feel it's, um, I understand it's necessary and important and that it comes down and swallows me. And somehow as it swallows me, I'm sm swallowing it. I'm swallowing dragon energy. And when I wake up, I feel like, wow, you know, I feel really strong, really powerful. And, and I feel that, and not so much heat, but, you know, the, the symbolic representation of heat, of just being creative and strong and, and, and self-contained somehow. And, um, you know, and I know this is a, it's no small thing, huh, to be swallowed by a dragon. That's kind of a big dream, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm holding that dream. And I had a really busy day that day. So I didn't have time other than writing it down to kind of think of that dream or to, uh, um, you know, make much sense of it. So the next night I go to sleep and I have another dream. And um, in this dream, I'm on an island that I've been to before. It's an island um, uh, just where there's a tent. It's kind of a Harry Potter tent that I brought there. It's a white tent, it looks small on the outside, but it's really big, right? And I go to that tent and um, someone has uh, uh, placed some three blue cushions in front of this little shallow reflecting pool. And I remember this pool as well. This pool was there. It was set up for the birds of the island so that they could come. If there was heat, they could have shade. Um, and, and when I'm sitting down, I sit in the middle cushion and I look up and I remember, oh yeah, there's a flap in the roof and the birds can come in that way. But so also at night, if you sit here, you could see the sun or the stars and the moon in the reflecting pool. And that sense really, it really makes sense to me. This is a reflecting pool. This is for humans to reflect on. And it shows us thing about ourselves. So as I'm sitting looking at this, um, at this pool, I'm kind of closing my eyes. An invisible guide comes to me. I feel it's a, a male presence. And he's, it's, it's very familiar. It's a very familiar presence. And <clears throat> again, invisible. And he says, what do you need? And I take that question to heart, you know, like I understand it's an important question. What do I need? What do I really need? And I close my eyes and I say, sometimes I'm really centered. I just feel really centered and balanced and I know who I am and I'm clear. And then suddenly I'm not. And the guide hands me a little golden object in my hand. It's three little rings and kind of a pin. And I realize it's a golden gyroscope. It hangs from a necklace. So there's three rings around a central axis and the rings go on different, you know, it's almost like 
5D or something, right? They spin in different ways. And I also sense it's connected with time. And and the guide tells me something uh, just personal about, about timing and about being in the now and about being balanced. And when I open my eyes, I realize on the right is sitting next to me, the dragon, the dragon from last night. He's sitting there and I feel that creative power, huh? that manifestation, that strength of dragon energy. And then I turn to my left and there's a polar bear. And it's a polar bear I knew. You know, I wrote a book about polar bears and I love the polar bears. And I, and I feel very familiar with this polar bear. And I kind of see it walking, you know, in the dark Arctic night on the snow and the ice and the stars and the moon are reflected down in that black space. And I feel the importance of that um, contemplative energy, the strength of the polar bear. And they're so different, huh? The dragon and the polar bear, but somehow they make sense to me. And, and the three of us just sit there together and we look in that reflecting pool and I feel balance. And when I woke up from, excuse me, when I woke up from this dream, I felt, oh, that's, that's a personal dream. That's about finding balance within yourself, but it's also a universal dream. And it very much reflected to me where we are right now in our world, how easily we can get knocked off center, you know, and how we need the gyroscope. And, and one thing I also felt about that gyroscope is that the guy put it inside of me and that we all have a gyroscope. We all have this means to balance within us and that we have that strength. And um, the reason this dream is so powerful to me now is because my husband passed away two weeks ago. And I realized this dream was such a gift telling me you can find balance, you know, because when any, if any of you, I'm sure people have experienced this, you know, when I first got that phone call that he had passed, it was, I knew, I knew when I heard the, the voice, just the hello, I knew everything. And, and my whole foundation was gone. I had no balance. And I knew my life would be completely different, right? I just knew I was a different person. And the first day was shock. And the second day was deep sobbing. And the third day, I remembered the gyroscope. And I remembered that we have this in us, we have an inner strength. And my husband would say to me, you're stronger. You're, you know, he would come to me every morning and he would say, you're stronger than you realize. You have this, you have this balance. So I just want to share with all of you this, and I feel like it was a gift. This dream was a gift, truly. And, and for everybody watching too, that, you know, I, I think we're probably going to go through some more stuff, some more of our foundation being pulled. And that we do have that inner gyroscope. We do have that inner strength. And and we have each other. You know? Yeah, we have each other. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Don. <clears throat> And yeah, I know that people watching this video are gonna all be wanting to send you love. So we've done that as a circle <laughs> off camera. And, you know, I just maybe take, we can just take a few seconds right now to, um, for those of you watching, I know that you probably are feeling a lot of care and love for Dawn. So I'll just take a pause for that yeah. love to come through thank you yeah <clears throat> and may all who are grieving be included in that circle oh yes support. thank you for saying that. yes yes because there's a lot a lot a lot of us grieving for various reasons if not all of us <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. thank you Okay. Um, Maura, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty deep into the sharing that uh, 
Don just did it touch me on many, many levels. So thank you, Don, for your vulnerability, for your dream, which I do think is personal but collective. And it was beautiful the way it was represented. Um, so I I wasn't gonna really say it, but I understand that shattering, um, that nothing's ever gonna be the same. Um, because I lost my husband, but it was now almost nine years ago. I can believe that it's been a long time, but it feels present still. Um, but not in the same way, but he's with me. Like you've talked about your husband and it helps so much to be able to contact through the love that was there on this side to the other side. It may makes, it made the difference between me probably being here now and not being here. <laughs> because I had that kind of communication with him. So um, it's, I guess that's one thing I would like to say. It does, you can contact people on the other side, everyone. It is possible. It is in fact essential if you can. Um, those that you love are there. They don't leave. They stay with you and they protect and they keep giving you information if you're open to it. So um, in your grief, if that's what you're experiencing, um, there is solace from the other side. And I suppose in some ways that is a kind of a balance too. We're in two worlds. It feels like we're in two worlds, but in some ways we're not. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a connection between the two. So um, that that continues. Um, so balance for me is, um, is is a funny word in some ways <laughs> because I'm not sure. Just like you were saying, Don, it's it, there's always this: am I in balance? Am I not in balance? What's throwing me off? What what's making? But is that that gyroscope, that place we come back to, where there's that center? And today I wore a pearl, a black pearl, because I was gonna wear, I always wear jewelry for symbology stuff. I was gonna wear my ankh and I thought that's good balance. And I thought, no, the pearl is like, it's it's the the roundness. And then when you talked about dragons, I thought, oh, perfect is that because it's kind of like in their hoard, you know? Um, so it, it, it talks about the fullness of who we are, this blackness, this, um, it's dark, but it's also round and beautiful and shiny and um i think it represents our souls in some ways so uh, but i i uh i had a, a quote i actually got from mary Whitman and watch it won't come up again oh no of course not that that i think speaks to me about what it's been for me where opposites are constantly in play and, and it's holding the tension of those opposites, the masculine, the feminine, the dark, the light, the, the upset, the peace, the whatever it is, and find, holding them, not, not giving in to one or the other necessarily, but to hold them to see what third thing is created or the wholeness that is created into the, into the, into the pearl of wisdom that you get from holding those tension of opposites. Um, and for me, it's been a very rich thing in my life and, 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 and essential to my growth process. And so uh, this is from Marion Woodman. And she says, whether we like it or not, one of our tasks on this earth is to work with the opposites through different levels of consciousness until body, soul, and spirit resonate together. And I think that's, 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 I love her anyway, but it's just so profound because that it is a constant life work of of balancing and finding equilibrium. I looked up balance and equilibrium too. I said, is that the same thing? And it kind of is and kind of isn't. <laughs> equilibrium is moving all the time and kind of a dynamic. And in our bodies, if there was a static equilibrium, it says we wouldn't be here. So there's this constant readjustment, like with the gyroscope, right? Constant readjustment of where do we find our center how do we find our center? How do we honor the opposites within us? How do we honor all the different parts of ourselves so that we can come into a wholeness so we can feel our oneness with everyone else and ourselves? And it's a lifelong work. It's lifelong. At least I found that. So 
I guess that's basically what I want to bring today. So again, thank you, Don, for your sharing. Wonderful. Heather, would you like to go next? Hmm. This is a powerful, profound, sacred circle and conversation that we're in. Thank you all. And along the lines of what you both have talked about, I really feel like the deeper meaning of balance is Libra, is that principle of ma'at, that ancient Egyptian understanding that everything is meant to be in right balance, right harmony with all that is. And it's hard to be in balance in a world that's so out of balance. And as you were saying, Dawn, I think that's that constant dance of how do we come back into alignment? How do we keep coming back to center and find that balance within ourselves? And I truly believe that ultimately we won't have balance in the world unless we each work to have balance within ourselves. Thich Nhat Hanh says you can't have peace in the world if you have war in your own heart. So we each need to find that path to balance. And it is about right relationship. And I think we need that to find that right relationship within ourselves. And we can also support each other in that. And I honor the way in which in this circle and in our connections with those of you who are also present, we're, we're finding that way of being in right relationship with each other. And as I'm thinking about how do we find that path to balance, I want to honor the wisdom in this circle and what I've learned from each of you. And I want to honor in today, in particular, some of the wisdom that I've learned from three of you and how that guides us in this path to balance. And I so honor your wisdom and your awareness that we can't come into balance in this time unless we reweave the sacred feminine with the sacred masculine. That is why we're out of balance in the world and out of balance within ourselves. And honoring that sacred feminine is about honoring our bodies, honoring the sacredness of all of life, coming out of disconnection and separation back into right relationship. I also wanna honor you, Dawn, and your book, Shadow Animals which so speaks to how we can't come into balance and come into our own inner wholeness without facing our own fears and those shadow aspects of ourselves. We can't find the light without facing and honoring the dark. And I think we have to be very careful in this time to not get caught in a spiritual bypass and try to go for the light without taking that time to do the inner work and face the shadows within ourselves and what's buried in the darkness. So thank you. And I honor you today, Melanie, also for your profound understanding of Chericlo mm -hmm. and that importance for me, for us to come into balance, we need to really take in that healing energy of Chericlo, which is about holding presence, holding empathic attunement, and that energy of compassion. Mm -hmm. And we need to bring that Chericlo energy to ourselves, to hold that compassion for ourselves. Then we can honor the wholeness of who we are, then we have that capacity to see each other clearly and hold that Chericlo energy for and with each other. Then we come back into right relationship. And I truly believe as we each find that balance within ourselves and that way back to right relationship, which is finding our inner song and letting it be part of the harmony of the spheres, as we do that, then we emanate that energy of balance and right relationship and love 
into the world and support the co-creating of a world in balance with each other. I second all of that. I love listening to Heather's voice. It's so calming and soothing. And each of you gives something very important. I think the word wisdom for me is most important to do with the balancing. And I gave a talk a week ago, just a week ago, on wisdom, about heart wisdom. And I invoked the wisdom of Solomon, who 3,000 years ago, he said, I called upon God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I loved her above health and beauty and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that cometh from her never goeth out. It's just, it's a lovely thing to remember that phrase, the light that cometh from her never goeth out, to invoke the spirit of wisdom as we're trying to find balance in this very frightening and discordant and insane world in some ways. So to keep the balance in the midst of that chaos is very difficult. And I'm sure that people are probably better at doing that balance than I am because I lose it frequently. And particularly when I'm trying to deal with technology, <laughs> it, it drives me off the, the, the rails. So I think what we are talking about is, is wisdom here and the difficulty of holding wisdom at that point, that still point. And I was also reminded, I mean, think I mentioned that marvelous hymn of the pearl. So when Maura talked about her black pearl and Dawn about her dragon, that took me right back to that marvelous hymn of the pearl or hymn of the robe of glory, where this young man goes down into incarnation removing his robes before he has to go because he has to put on earthly robes. And he goes down into Egypt, which is that time the um, image of this world. And then he forgets all about what he's supposed to do. And he goes to sleep, really. And then his parents in the upper world see what's happening, and they call a great meeting of all the nobles and kings and princes of the, of the uh, higher realm. And they send a message to him in the form of an eagle. And the eagle comes and flutters near him. And suddenly he realizes that he's forgotten. He wakes up and he holds the eagle and strokes it. And the eagle goes before him on his way back to the heavenly realm. And first of all, he takes the pearl from the dragon or the great serpent. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other. So dragon and pearl are very important, I think, in this conversation. And he returns to his kingdom in the higher worlds, and he's given his robe of glory as he goes towards his parents. His messengers come with his robe of glory and put it on him. And he remembers who he really is. And he's going, he says, um, I'm going to take my pearl to the king of kings. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put that in. I've been working on this material for a long time now about the Gnostics and the Gnostic wisdom, because their wisdom was all about knowing that we had a path through life that we needed to follow. It was all about heart wisdom, very calm, very quiet, very intelligent. It was not about rushing up into the higher worlds. It was knowing that we were here for a purpose on this earth. And they put it so beautifully in some of these, um, like that poem, was written in the third century um, CE in a place called Edessa, which is in Mesopotamia. So I would just like to thank you all and thank you particularly to Dawn for, for being in, courageous enough to come tonight and speak from the heart. I've had these wonderful animals on each side, the polar bear and the dragon. Right. What could be a greater blessing? than that. I saw the polar bear earlier on, but I didn't see the dragon until you talked about it. <laughs> anyway, thank you, all of you. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, I'm pausing my recording, Julia, just for a second, because Melanie mentioned that this might happen, that her video might go out. Melanie, um, all right. Kelly, would you like to go next? 
I love all of the threading that we do in these circles because something, you know, resonates from each of us, right? And um, John, you reminded me of a dream I had at the beginning of Equinox Weekend, which was waking up to uh, a word. And I kept repeating the word and I was spelling the word and I had alternate spellings of the word. And the word, well, it was a phrase, but the word was preliminary and it was about flare, preliminary flare. So it was about the sun and about solar flares. And the preliminary, I kept spelling it so I would remember it, but I also ended up spelling it P-R-E-L-I-M-B-I-N-A-R-Y, preliminary, like relating to our limbs. And uh, I like that in terms of the balance, because here we are, you know, kind of, we have these two halves and we have the equinox with the scales of Libra. And, you know, when I'm thinking Libra, it's never like the scales are like perfectly balanced all the time. And even equinox is just like that one day or so. Uh, I do believe it's extended this time because we are in eclipse season and we are going to have uh, a new moon annular ring of fire solar eclipse in Libra, which I think extends this whole theme of that and extends the theme of equinox and how the balance keeps shifting. And when we can stay in our center, that shift doesn't go wild. So, but there is even walking, we're unbalanced for just a split second, you know? And, and so there's this, you know, keeping the balance even as we're walking forward, moving forward. I was listening to music this morning as I was thinking about this group coming and there's one song that came and I kept hearing the words, dreaming ourselves back to love. And it, mm -hmm. that's not what she was singing, but I, I, I thought that phrase was something to share. And also I knew, I just knew somebody was gonna mention Ma'at and of course, Heather, you'd be the obvious one because that myth is so much about the scales and keeping the balance. And Ma'at, the, an Egyptian goddess of wisdom, has in her headdress, she has a feather, the feather of truth, and she'll take it out and she'll put it on the scales and see how your heart or your soul weighs with that feather of truth. And I just love that Ma'a imagery for this time and just for remembering our heart and soul with at this time of year and these two equinox times of year, which are tipping points in the year, uh, connecting the dark and the light. Opposite you know, depending on what hemisphere you're in. And when I was um, preparing for to be present with you today, I was thinking about balance and I was thinking about the yoga posture, the tree, because when you do the tree, you're standing on one foot and you're holding your arms above you and your other leg is lifted. And I tried it on both sides to see how well balanced I was. And it was a little steadier when I was on my right foot. And I'm probably going to do this more today. But that representing that that kind of balance and the strength that takes to maintain balance. And there's so many balances. And it's not just this kind of balance. It's the balance of heaven and earth. It's the vertical balance as well, which are represented by those poles and that we need that balance between what we've been talking about with our spiritual side and our earthly side in relationship with ourselves and the different dimensions of ourselves that are also awakening in very special ways. So, 
we are feeling this balance on so in so many ways you know both the all those dualities and the left and right and the shiva shakti of the masculine and feminine divine but we're also feeling the the as above so below balance we're also needing a lot of self care lately i feel like and that the relationship with ourselves is the primary relationship we're making a relationship between our small s self and our capital s self we're in relationship with the earthly side of ourselves and the divine side of ourselves and they need to be communicating with each other communing with each other and also the heart and the head need to be in balance and i think that is one of the more difficult balances to maintain because we're not educated along those lines but we need to you know especially when there's so much information so much you know coming in from the outside we need to you know just pull down into our hearts and and dwell here and find the calm find that that love and is the heart both the center of both this polarity and this polarity so being in the heart and the heart connected to the soul so these various relationships these various dynamics that we are living in um are present in this annual moment and also uh ongoing as you said Martha it's an ongoing there are resonances with equinox with these different you know kind of balancing acts that we're doing all through the year and the eclipse on October 2nd is one of those major balancing points and there're going to be others as we move along as well when the dragon comes to the equinox points pretty soon the nodes of the moon the dragon head and the dragon tail are moving into alignment with the equinox points so this is very much an ongoing exercise for the next several months and um i'm i'm appreciating that in my life and i am just so grateful that that preliminary flare dream somehow led to a series of very smooth days across equinox weekend for me and it was like just a lovely evocation and that meant to me that i was staying in balance in my heart i was not letting the constant activity stress me out i was staying more in a a kind of personal equanimity than than i'm used to being and i am so you know it, uh, prayerful that i can maintain that from a deeper level from this point forward and i thank you all for your inspiration thank you kelly yeah i think it's really interesting that this this eclipse season and the next eclipse season the equinoxes are right in between the two eclipses and playing a really interesting role yeah um so melanie would you like <laughs> melanie's uh camera is having issues but she's here she's still here <laughs> would you like to go next melanie <clears throat> sure uh, i'll go next and uh, really appreciating everybody's sharing it's very touching and wonderful so certainly the theme of balance has been with me uh, very strongly over the last period of time and you can't see my face at the moment but i'm kind of grinning <laughs> because very funny things have been happening to me some also painful and poignant and a few bereavements of friends and so forth but also a lot of very funny things 
So I've been reflecting on the theme of balance as regard these very funny things. And what I'm noticing is that with the theme of Libra, and I'm thinking ahead to the eclipse next week, I can remember, wow, many years ago when I was in my late 20s, I did a training in psychosynthesis and I had the insight just last week that back then, I'm sure you're all familiar with the notion of subpersonalities, right? And in the sense of uh, working with dialogue and journaling and all kinds of other things, for the endeavor of trying to get things in balance, basically. So all the subpersonalities are at least on speaking terms and ideally are cooperating one with the other. So based on a few very funny things that have been happening, I sort of saw this whole endeavor in a new light and I couldn't stop laughing. Because where I went with this, I thought, oh, my God, back then I thought that I knew what balance meant, you know, aided and abetted by my psychosynthesis training, which I'm sure I understood only very superficially back in the day. But what came to me was, wow, back then I thought I knew what balance was and what it felt like. And that by no means encompassed periods of time when, in fact, the deeper balance in one's soul is in a transformation process, which might necessitate a certain amount of rug pulling by the universe with us ending up <laughs> on our rear end or somehow knocked over, completely out of balance and in chaos while the deeper, uh, new, incoming balance begins to <laughs> gel into manifestation. And I really had fun seeing that. And where it took me was to many really hilarious things that have happened over the last period of time. And now I can see it in the <laughs> in the light of this notion of a deeper balance might just upset the apple cart completely for a period of time as it's coming into our lives. So I, uh, I have a pattern of occasionally, and I mean this, you know, every 15, 20 years and so it's not like a regular normal kind of pattern where I seem to have a major infrastructure breakdown by which I mean... <laughs> that everything seems to malfunction or break or go on the blink all at once. And they're all things, none of which I can do without, and they all need fixing at the same time. And I'm then <laughs> running around like a kind of crazed chicken with my head off kind of thing, trying to fix everything and it not working and me making it worse by trying to do it myself. <laughs> and this is what's been going on, and it's... I mean, the list of things that all broke within a few days is just completely ridiculous. My washing machine, my dryer, my webcam, still on the blink, uh, my printer, and a bunch of other things. And I needed them all at once, immediately. <laughs> so I've been really crazed. And the more crazed I got, <laughs> the more funny it all became. So it's been just completely <laughs> hilarious. I felt like I was being blotted out, you know, like now I'm a black screen. I felt I was being blotted out by all these <laughs> demands on the material plane, which I seem to not be able to get in control of. And I ended up just sitting laughing and laughing and laughing because it all seemed so funny. And just, you know, the idea uh, that... Uh, the, the recognition that we all have an idea of how things balance or what should be happening. And most of the time we have a pretty limited view 
of what's really, really, really going on in our process. <laughs> and the the art of kind of sitting and waiting for that clarity to appear is something by which I take great solace when everything goes into chaos, you know. <laughs> so I thought I would mention this apropos of balance. And I do remember I had a Libra, very Libran friend once who said to me, when people think of Libra, they think of the endless balancing to and fro of all the scales. But what they should be talking about, this friend said, uh, is the pole in the middle on which hang the scales. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that because it seemed like such a simple and yet eloquent understanding of that very symbol, you know. So I, I will chuckle off into the dark now. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, we were saying how perfect it is in a certain. I mean, I would prefer to be able to see your face, <laughs> and you're yeah. you're laughing, but in a certain sense, it's perfect. I'm sure. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Speaking from source, the galactic sense. All oh, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right now the, the sun is right near the super galactic center, so maybe that's where you're coming from. I don't know. <laughs> the world. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Julia. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you all. I always say the higher you go, the greater sense of humor you will start uh, feeling and sensing and channeling. So mm -hmm. that may well be the case, too. Um. Before I go to my offering, I realized as I listened to Dawn's dream about a dragon and a polar bear, that there may be deeper, deeper layer of symbolism with the dragon um, constellation being, uh, or the Alpha Draconis, the Tuban being the North Star thousands of years ago, perhaps when pyramids were built. And now it's the polar bear, the North Star is the Polaris. Mm. So it may be the Alpha and the Omega and uh, and coming full circle and finding balance in understanding everything we learned along the way. So there may be more for contemplation. And so thank you for bringing that in. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the sentence that I wrote to kind of help me find my trail here was, that next to love, balance is the most important thing that helps us develop all the virtues. And I felt like, hmm, like, could it be that balance next to love is the most important thing? And I'm so glad when Anne said balance is wisdom, then it made perfect sense. Of course, next to love, balance, wisdom is the most important thing. And what is required for us in order to keep the balance, and someone, someone may have mentioned here before, is the ability to recognize when we lose it, right? And then having, being able to contemplate and reflect and find courage to either let go of things or hold on to things to help us keep the balance. And for me personally, what really helps me find clarity and in my contemplation is astrology. I really want to, or feel guided to bring astrology to, um, as a gift to anyone who may need that as a valuable tool. And on any astrologer's journey, I believe the moment when we realize that the 12 archetypes of the zodiacs are working in relationship with one another, with their opposing sign, um, that's when we really get to get to the treasures and the gifts and depths of the deep meaning and profound transformational wisdom that comes from it. And the book that helped me understand this and really broaden my, and deepen my understanding of the 12 archetypes is the wonderful book by Jan Spiller, Astrology for the Soul. I highly recommend it to even a complete novice to astrology. You don't even need any software because uh, Jan lists uh, the dates of your birth, where you can find out where is your dragon head and your dragon tail, your north node and your south node that um, symbolizes the the key signature of 
of your soul's focus as your soul evolves over eternity. And I found that to be true as I was facilitating um, quantum healing hypnosis sessions, regressing people to past lives, future lives, parallel lives, where oftentimes people who regress to multiple uh, life stories in their session, when I looked at their natal chart, their south node, the dragon's tail, was perfectly in alignment with the theme that were revealed in their past lives. I really wholeheartedly believe that we are, as a soul, focusing on, on a theme that, by the way, can be quite rich because you not only have the zodiac sign on your north node and the opposing sign on the south node, but you're also looking at the houses, the positions where the nodes are um, located in the life areas that you are developing, mastering or balancing. And it's always about balancing the two and finding the pole of the scale at the center. So it can be a wonderful, wonderful tool um, where you can really get to know yourself better. And um, I only recently learned that the motto on the, that was carved into the stone on Apollo's temple, it doesn't only say, know thyself, but it also says, and everything in moderation. And as I reflected today, mm -hmm. to me that translates to uh, maintain balance, know thyself and maintain balance. So again, I would wholeheartedly invite anyone to um, to invite, well, to allow astrology to be a wonderful tool for self-reflection and understanding the, the op opposites and how they can work together into creating something um, powerfully magnetic, um, recentering, uh, peaceful, joyful, and all those wonderful things that come with it. So that's my share. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> um, well, the aspect of balance that I'm feeling called to, to speak to is um, <clears throat> the, the balancing in me, and I think for a lot of us, in um, holding sp space for both being the, the vulnerable human being that we are, and then also being this wise being who has is has incarnate on incarnated on the planet to serve right i think most of us who are listening who are part of this circle and who are listening to this video you probably feel some calling in you to be of service in this time and that you have incarnated because you are meant to be of service in this time etc and I know that's definitely true for me. And one of the, I would say the core part of balance that I'm personally sitting with is how to balance the personal me and the of service me. <laughs> how do I both get nourished and nurtured myself? And then how do I balance that with what I'm meant to do in the world? And um, so I can just briefly mention this one image that's been coming really powerful, powerfully for me since actually the actual Equinox Day, um, and I I also recently have created this whole free series. It's very related to what you're talking about, Heather. It's called the Wholeness Way series because the biggest thing that the spirit world has been saying to me lately is that the number one thing they want me to be holding space for is for us to all come back into the reality that we are wholeness itself. We embody, and, and how can how can we embody the reality that we are wholeness itself? Um, and so if you're interested in, in going deeper with that, it's all free, the link is with the videos anyway. But the this one image that's been coming to me just in the last few days since the actual equinox that I can invite you to feel is a sense of, um, can take a deep breath and just just feel that reality that you are all of us are every single one of us are a an a soul being who is 
incredibly wise. We are literally the being, we are literally made of the substance of the stars, the substance of the cosmos. There's nothing that we are made of that hasn't been here for eternity, right? So we are literally ancient, <laughs> literally are physically <laughs> even. And so there's this being that is us, that is this ultimate soul being that is us. And then you can imagine, so you can feel that being that is you. That's just true. It just is. And then there's this other part of your being, each one of our beings, who is also the, the, the child being who incarnated, who is, is the seed of the acorn. I mean, the seed, you know, the acorn of the, the oak tree, where imprinted in that seed is the wisdom of the the knowing of what it's meant to become <clears throat> and that so the that ultimate wise soul self that is us is like the template in a sense of what is known inside that acorn so you can imagine your toddler self or your infant self or your five-year-old self, your small self, your child self being picked up by your ultimate wise ancient being self. And the image that's been really nurturing for me in the last few days is then to imagine your ancient wise self holding your toddler self heart to heart heart and because that ancient wise being is the template of who you actually are on the ultimate level and and at the same time that wise being that is you knows every single detail of what the toddler being needs what the seed needs to be nourished and held and given exactly what you need in this moment and any moment. So for me, this is a really deep balancing of the vulnerable human being that is me and then this ancient wise being that is me, all as one, where I don't need to deny one or the other. It's a totality of who I am and it's a totality of Eat who each of us are. We don't need to pretend to be perfect. We don't need to pretend to be anything. And we can also be vulnerable and cry and be in a really difficult moment. And it's still true that we are this ancient wise being also. So they're, they're always both right here. And you can access that any time that it calls to you. Yeah, so that's just a brief, brief gift to me this week. And so I offer that if it happens to feel good for you. Um, wonderful. I think we've all shared. Yeah. And we're technically at our time, but is there anything that wants to be said before we close? There is there was one realization that I've had when you led this beautiful introduction grounding meditation Martha where I realized that energetically my left side felt quite bigger comparing to my right side energetically but and by the end of the wonderful guided experience it felt balanced I suddenly felt a lot of energy just streaming into the right side of the energetic field and there was balance I believe it's such a simple and quick um, check in with ourselves if we just close our eyes and ask to feel how large energetically the left side feels and the right side feels and then if there is out of balance you simply intentionally from the heart start infusing the energy into the other side and suddenly you just feel at the center and whole it could be super quick and quite efficient so thank you for that yeah mm -hmm. Anyone else? Kelly, you're making a motion. I feel the circle's complete. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts, Julia. <laughs> 
and the celebration. <laughs> nice. Wonderful. Well, okay. So yes, I will help us to close out and um, thank you all again who are here live, of course, and all of you watching so, so much. It is, this is what the, this is what my heart needs. I'll speak for myself. And I think it's what the world needs is for us to be in these sacred spaces together and for each and all of us to acknowledge these, the wisdom that we are and the vulnerability that we are and do it together. So thank you all for listening. <laughs> um, and to close out, uh, we can again, come back into our beings, ourselves as earth and source as one, come into this presence of the sacred circle and we can release from the circle and release from each of our own individual beings, anything and everything that does not serve our absolute radical highest good and the highest good of the all that is. <clears throat> and we can allow to anchor in anything and everything that does serve the absolute radical highest good of ourselves and of the all that is. And we can feel the particles of light that do serve the absolute radical highest good permeating ourselves, nurturing us, nourishing us, giving us exactly what we need individually, collectively. And we can feel those particles of light permeating this circle, permeating each and all of you listening, participating, being present here with us through the recording and those particles of light going through all of time, all of space, permeating this entire world, this whole planet, every dimension, plus everything, everywhere, through the whole time-space continuum and beyond into the void. And we can feel the powerful beings, many, many, many infinite benevolent beings holding the space, just like that Cheriklo energy that, that Heather was mentioning holding the space for the entire time-space continuum so powerfully with infinite love forever that even as things feel and seem unbalanced, <clears throat> that Cheriklo unconditional love presence is, it just is. Thank you each so much for being here. And so it is. Amen.